Welcome to Bunny Fish Crafts. I'm your host Heather, known as Bunny Fish on Ravelry, Plurk, Instagram, and YouTube. Today is Monday, the 3rd of February, 2014, and this is episode 64, The Waiting Game. Grab some sticks and string and come sit with me. I am waiting for the Olympics to start so that I can participate in the Ravelinics or the Winter Games or whatever people are calling them. Because, of course, the the things that I really, really want to work on are the things that I can't start just yet, even though I started some new projects this week, so go figure. The Nitty Knit Along started two days ago. Did you start your project? I did not start my project. I have the yarn sitting there looking at me, waiting, but there are some other things that I want to work on first. It's a two-month knit along. I'm definitely making a pair of socks. That probably won't take me two months. <laughs> we'll see. Um, but I hope you get a chance to go over and look at Nitty and pick out a project and start it or pick up a Nitty pattern that you have already started and have about 50% of the work left to do. And that would be great. I have a couple FOs with this week. I'm wearing the Moody. It's completed. So here's my Moody and it has five buttons because it buttons all the way up to here. I'm not going to button it because even though it's cold outside, I'm quite warm in the sweater in short sleeves. This is the back. I did the decreases here because I wanted it to be more fitted. There were The decreases were optional, as were um, chest increases, which I did because I wanted it to be a little more fitted. This is the, uh, the Moody by Elena Nodell. I used Knit Picks Wool of the Andes tweed in Sequoia Heather and US size 4 3.5 millimeter needles. I had to go down needle sizes to get gauge. It calls for a 7. I needed to use a 4, but my gauge swatch did not lie and I think it fits very well. What else? There was something else. Oh, I bought one extra skein of yarn. I have four skeins left over right now. I didn't even break into them. This is what I had left of the skein I was working with. So I have four untouched skeins of yarn. I don't know what I'm going to do with them. I don't make a lot of worsted weight things that would need to be hand washed. We'll see. They now live in my stash, I guess. I also finished the Nebula socks by Cookie A. I did not put them on sock blockers because the tops of the feet are mirrored. Did they go this way or did they go the other way? Does it really matter? I don't know. There you go. There are the socks and they fit fantastically. I used Tessa's Designer Yarns. It is the Super Sock and Baby 80% Superwash Merino, 20% Nylon. There's no color ratings. Made these on US 1 2.25 millimeter needles. I like them a lot. This yarn has really high twist, so it's good for all these textured stitches. You see, even when they're on, the cables and the twisted stitches look awesome. I'm really pleased with these socks. I Last week, I think I said that I cast them on in June. No, that was a lie. I cast these on at the very end of April. Why did it take me so long to finish these socks? I'm there's no reason for it. Because the the foot of the first sock took me almost no time after I had it in time out. And then the second sock, I basically did the whole sock in three days. I mean I think I had two rounds last week or something, or a pattern repeat or something last week, but then over three days I finished the sock. That's silly. That's I could have had these all winter. I could have had these since the fall or summer even. And it's not because the pattern was like crazy. The pattern is a little crazy. There are something like, I can't remember, I counted it was 10 or between 10 and 14 charts. I don't know. It was a lot of charts, but they're not difficult charts. I don't know. I don't know what I was thinking. Love the pattern. Love the socks. I'm going to start wearing them immediately. 
works in progress. I feel like I'm rushing, but, well, I feel like I sound like I'm rushing, but I'm not actually rushing. I don't know what's going on. So, first, this is really exciting. I did 15 minutes on the supported spindle. And this is what my yarn looks like. It's a little bit, uh, well, it's a lot of bit thick and thin. See, it's got that really thick part, and then it goes to really fine. Control will come with practice. I don't have a lot of, I obviously don't have a lot of practice since this is my first 15 minutes on a supported spindle. Um, and I haven't spun on a wheel, so I don't really have a lot of practice with long draw. But I'll get there. <laughs> it's a little confusing right now. It's a, not confusing. It's a little awkward. But it's just like when you learn how to knit and your hands are like, whoa, what are we doing? And then eventually you get to the point where you can do stock net in the round in the dark. Or at least I am to that point. So I only did 15 minutes, though. I'm going to attempt to do 15 minutes a day this week. Last week was just kind of crazy. They had our car in the shop for five days. It did not look like that much damage to me, but of course I'm not a shop, so I don't know. And they probably had other cars to work on and stuff. I don't know. I started working on Dirk the Dragon by Lydia Tressel. And I'm using 716 Knit, 716 Sock in Hamsters. Everybody wants petrified hamsters and they're never happy with them. Something like that. So I picked it up and I now have the start of the little body. Isn't this the cutest thing ever? And then this is the head and it's going to be, you know, here-ish. So it's kind of going to look like that. It's super cute. Lisa of the Knit Two Together podcast she and I started making them together, and she is further than I am. She told me that once I get past the body increases, everything else goes super, super fast, and I am doing the last, um, the last straight rounds, you know, where you just single crochet, no increases or decreases, of the increase section, so... Apparently this is going to fly very soon. I love this color. Look at those pops of color. I've got pinks and blues, purples. The purples are my favorite when I'm working because they're just like bam. And there's some green. I just love this colorway. Anyway, I just love Jenna's yarn, really. 716 Knit, if you haven't checked them out, her out, not them. If you haven't checked her out, definitely check her out. And I'm using a USB one 2.25 millimeter hook. So it's basically like making a sock. When I finished my sweater, Gabriel was like, oh, are you going to make me my sweater now? And I was like, well, yes, I'll make you your sweater now. And then, do you recall how I told you that he didn't like the yarn that I got for his sweater? So, Lorraine brought me yarn from her stash. Well, then he decided that he liked the yarn that I had originally got for him. Whatever. My plan now is to make two sweaters in Gabriel's size, and Mara can just wear them. One of them, whichever one he doesn't want to wear, should she, she so choose. And it'll be a little bit long. I'll just roll up the sleeves a little bit. And then she can grow into them. That's my plan. Instead of making one in his size and one in her size. Speaking of sizing. Okay, I'll get to that in a second. I started the Gramps Cardi by Kate Oates. Yes. I'm using Knit Picks Swish DK in Rainforest Heather. I did a gauge swatch, and I got gauge with the recommended needle size, so it's not just me. Well, yeah, it's it's not because I'm a super tight knitter or loose knitter or anything for this sweater, because I got it on this. I think, so this is, this is how much this stretches, and 
I keep looking at it and I think that's crazy huge but then it bunches up and it's not so crazy huge. I measured Gabriel yesterday because I cast this on yesterday at knitting. I measured him yesterday around the chest which is where you take the measurements to see what size approximately I should be making him because I can make it longer or shorter that's not too difficult. His chest circumference is a quarter inch larger than the six month old size. And a full six, no, a full eight inches smaller than the six year old size. I don't know. Maybe my kids are just, I mean, I, I know my kids are on the slimmer side. When we were little, our mom used to get told all the time that she should feed us more, but um, we ate constantly, and my kids eat constantly. For instance, this morning, they both had four oranges and two bowls of cereal. I mean, over a span of like three hours, but that's what they wanted, and it wasn't too bad for them, so whatever. I really like this color. It's kind of bluey green with flecks of purple-ish in it. I don't know if you can see it better there or here. It's really, really, really pretty. Way prettier than the Knit Picks site makes it look, and I kind of want a sweater for myself out of it. That's ridiculous. I just made myself a sweater. But I kind of want this to be for me. See? Wouldn't that be nice? It would be nice. And this pattern was gifted to me by Jerry. So thank you, Jerry. I'm super excited to work on this. I don't know how much I'm going to get done this week, though, because it's heavily cabled. And um, sometimes that takes extra concentration. Something that is that can be in short supply around here. I cast on a second project at knitting. I didn't really have anything to take with me because I didn't want to work on the dragon while I was knitting, while at knitting. Sometimes people don't show up right when the, um, the, the regularly scheduled time starts. So sometimes I'm reading a book or something and these stitches on this dragon are so small that it's, even though I can crochet in the dark, I cannot crochet this project in the dark. The stitches are too small for me to be quite sure that I'm that I'm crocheting correctly by touch. And I knew that I would definitely get through the ribbing for the sweater. So I was like, well, I'll bring another project to start. I didn't want to try to worry about cables also because just in case people didn't show up or people left early. I like to have my entire, it's two and a half hours on Sundays. I like to have my entire two and a half hours to myself, children free, that's my time. So I brought a second project to cast on and I did. This is the Owly Sleep Sack and I forgot to write down who it's by. It'll be in the show notes. I made two of these last year around the beginning of the year, one in white. So I'm making another one in white. This is Lion Brand Pound of Love. I may have actually used this in the other sleep sack, like the same skein. I'm pretty sure I did. This is the never ending skein of yarn. I've used it in a few different projects, but they've all been for babies, so they've all been small yardage. So again, I'll be making a sleep sack out of it. This is a free pattern on Ravelry, so I'm going to talk about it a little bit. The reason why I picked this for knitting was even though it's got these little owl cables near the top, there's actually all this stock net. So I cast on and did the necessary rounds of stock net while I was sitting and chatting at knitting. And as you can see, I have stitch markers. I would like to have a discussion with you about stitch markers for a moment. Do you use them? I use them like crazy. I love stitch markers. If it makes sense to have a stitch marker in the pattern to me, I will put in a stitch marker. So every pattern repeat has a little stitch marker. This is the beginning of the round with a little tail. 
These were the first stitch markers that I had, these round circle ones, and they're okay, but they're not great for socks because they're really thick. But other than just marking my place, like marking divisions between pattern repeats, I also use them to count in a couple different ways. I had to do so many rounds of stockinette while I was at knitting, but I didn't want to have to pay attention to how many rounds I was doing while I was at knitting. That would defeat the purpose of having this project that I could just take and work on and talk and whatever. So what I did was I put a stitch marker. So I had my ending stitch marker. Well, I'll go over here. That makes, that's more correct. So I had this beginning stitch marker and then I put a stitch marker as many stitches away from the stitch marker as I needed to do rows. And every time I came to the stitch marker, I would move it one stitch to the left. It works really well because then you can visually see how many rows you need to do decreasing and also you don't have to pay attention. Let me get to a stitch marker and I will show you how I slip my stitch markers when I am when I'm using them as a counter. I also use the stitch markers this way when I'm doing the decreases in my mitered squares. I don't always use stitch markers, but if I'm in a VKN or something where I won't necessarily be paying attention to what I'm doing, then I put in a stitch marker so that it's even more mindless. Okay, so here I am. I am to this stitch marker, but I don't want to slide it over. I want to move it a stitch. So what I do is lift up the stitch marker, and I'm actually purling. These are purl stitches right here. So purl through the stitch behind the stitch marker, slip the stitch marker onto the needle, and there you go. One stitch, the stitch marker has moved over one stitch. I don't have to pay attention to know where, how many rounds I need to do. Obviously, I'm going to move that back next time I get to that stitch marker because I'm not counting rows, I'm counting pattern repeats. But that's one way to do it. And also, for this pattern, I'm to a part where it's knit in pattern for, I don't remember how many rounds there were, but now I have five rounds to go because I have stitch markers and every time I get back to that beginning stitch marker, I just put one away. That way I don't have to think about it, I don't have to count I will know that I need to put these away because my stitch markers are pretty good speed bumps for me. If they're not good speed bumps for you, that might not work, but it's a trick that I like to use. I have one other project to show you. This is the Faux Angora called Pink Ladies from the Grace series, four ounces, and it is from Spartacus Dyes. I am closing in on finishing the second half. So this is what it looks like on the spindle. And it's in my stitched, let's see, this way. Stitched by Just Lou bag. It's got the TARDIS on it in Star Night. That's what it looks like on the spindle. And I was surprised. I didn't, I didn't realize I was so far in the fiber. This is how much I have left. Not a ton. Don't quote me on this, but I think that I'm going to try finish spin to finish spinning this before the Olympics opening ceremony so that I don't have to worry about it because if you've been here, you may have heard me mention that I am planning to spin a f four ounces into a two-ply sock yarn during the Revolinic Games on a drop spindle. So I would just like to have one project kind of done. This won't be completely done because I'm not applying this fiber on itself. I'm spinning this into singles and then I'm going to spin a different fiber, totally different, it's a 100% merino. I'm going to spin that into singles and then I'm going to apply the two together. But I would like to have these singles done in the next four days. That's doable. I've already done more than I thought I did. Okay, what do you want to see first? Hexapuffs or a sock yarn blanket? Let's do sock yarn blanket. Oh, I forgot to check and see how many squares I did this week and figure out the total for you. 
I will, I don't know if I'll do it next week, but definitely when the Revelinic Games ends, I will have a count for you on the percentage. Anyway, let's see. Oh, I'm sitting on it. That's not good. Let's see what I did this week. I did this square, which is the Tessa's Designer Yarns that I just used in the Nebula socks. I did this square, which came from the ZK. Oh, I um, I decided to get a little bit creative with some squares this week. So this one has some eyelet details. And this one has different decreases. Instead of doing a center double decrease, I did, um, I slip, slip, I did slip slip knit before the center stitch, knit the center stitch, and then did knit two together after the center stitch. I did this one, and for this one I did knit two together, knit the center stitch, slip slip knit for the decreases. Just to change it up, see how that worked out. No, it was this square, wasn't it? It was this square, it was not this square. I knew it was a green square on the edge. This one's normal. This one is where I changed it up. This is um, Madeline Tosh, I think. Window pane, which I got from my friend Becca. And these two yarns are from the ZK, but they were given to me by Josh, who is sort of a knitter at the ZK. And this is actually two different yarns. This bottom section is one little tiny mini skein and then this part is a second. This also came from a woman named Mary at the ZK. Can't remember. And this was also a Mary yarn. Can't remember her Ravelry name. And this one I also got at the ZK. I'm doing ZK yarns right now, except when I finish project and then I'll throw this cane in. Um, this was from Mary Gale of Spartacus Dyes. She did a special color for herself and Melissa of the Meltran Designs. Um, design. Ness. I don't know. Words escape me right now. She also has a podcast. But this color is called Tipping Point, and I think it's super gorgeous. So those are all the squares that I did. And then I did Hexapuffs. I will show them to you. There's three. I think I just heard my camera focus from here. I don't think this ever happened before. Weird. Three more. Yeah, I can hear my camera focusing. It's definitely an internal mechanical problem. I'm sorry, I am working on getting a new camera. They're not like the most expensive things ever, but they do cost money. So I'm working on it. It might take a few more weeks. And this is the this is the um, Nebula Hexapuff yarn. And actually, I'm going to tell you what all of these are because I can. I made the Sakitumi Mystery Knit Along Socks for my sister out of this. I made two projects using this. The String Band Hat by um, Stephen West and the Royal Iris by Meltran Designs. This was that ZK yarn from Josh because I had extra and I figured he would allow me to use it for that. This is ah, Spontaneous Cheerleader Combustion 716. It was a mini skein that I received from Jenna and I put one square in my miter square blanket and made a hexapuff. This is 716 um, Southern California Poo Poo Southern California Poo Poo and I used these to make some socks for my niece, and I'm going to be using the rest of it to make some socks for my sister. These two are going to go together in those socks for my sister. I think they'll look great. This is Tipping Point, Spartacus Dyes. And this one is Lion Brand Sock Ease in Cotton Candy. And this 
this hexapuff is a little bit different. I decided to change it up and play with the pattern. So that is one side, and that is the other. You might notice a difference in how the yarn works up between these. So it was fun to play with it. I will probably make a few more of these. These are this type is definitely more fiddly than this type. But I think occasionally it might be fun to do one of these when the yarn speaks to me and says, hey, I want to look like a bullseye. Didn't get anything new this week. I'm still reading The Diviners by Libba Bray, but we had to take a break. This book and I, we had to take a break because I started having nightmares. And it may be related to reading this book because there are there's a rash of murders and they're kind of grisly. So it may have something to do with this book, or sometimes I just have nightmares for no reason, like for a week, I just have nightmares. I don't know, who knows. This one I'm really excited about. I only have it for a week. I'm sure if I asked to borrow it longer, I could have it for more than a week. But Lorraine, my enabler, she is loaning me a book because I was asking her last week at knitting what she knew about Gotland. That's the fiber that I'm planning to spin for the winter games. I didn't know anything about spinning it, prepping it, anything. I didn't know anything about it. And I asked her about it and she told me that she didn't really know anything about it, but she does have the Fleece and Fiber Source book. This is on my wish list. I want this book. But in the meantime, she's letting me borrow her copy so I can read up on Gotland before Friday so that I have an idea of what I'm working with. And I'll probably read up on some other breeds of sheep because this book is ginormous and awesome. I'm really excited about reading this. I'm not reading it yet, and it's not really mine, so it's not really a new thing, but I think that you guys should, you know. If you haven't checked looked into this book at all, you totally should. It's not just for people who spin. I mean, it's good if you're spinning so that you can learn more about different fibers and how they spin up, but it also talks about, um, it also tells you things that will help you pick appropriate yarn for knitting with. So I'm excited to start reading this. This week, I'm going to talk about three podcasts, and they are not podcasts that, um, they're podcasts that you probably already know about. And they're podcasts that are just different than they were before. So, I think that last week I was talking about the, um, the homespun podcast and how they had to split up because of work schedules and things changing. So Homespun podcast is now Just Molly. Check it out. It's still at the same blog location. There's a Ravelry group. I think it's at the same blog lo location. I might be making that up. It'll be linked in the show notes, but check her out. And then Claire is doing a new podcast, her own podcast, and it's called A Nightbird. And Claire is only doing it once a month. Her plan is to update at the beginning of each month and let you know what she's been working on, what she's planning on working on. However, she has a blog and she's really, really active with her blog, or she has been so far, which is nice. It's a nice way to keep updated with her and what's going on. She talks about baking on her blog and um, fun things that she and her son have been doing. So I'm enjoying, I enjoyed episode one. I don't know if episode two is up yet. I haven't looked at podcasts yet today, so it could be there. And then the last one is Raindrop Knits with Sarah. You might be thinking, hmm, that sounds kind of familiar. Maybe you know it better as Rain Lover Knits. She used to have the Rain Lover podcast, but then she went on hiatus for a while and she lost her domain name. So now she's 
raindrop knits. And I never got to see the Rain Lover knits because when I went over to start watching it, the, the episodes were gone. So I never saw that. But episode one of Raindrop Knits was pretty good. So go check. Mm, excuse me. That was... Ugh. I'm sorry. Go check out... Um, go check out those three podcasts. They're really good. I think they're really good. Uh, I hope you made something fantastic with your sticks and string, and I will see you next week. Bye!